Uh, yeah, guys, uh, am I audible now? Uh, I think it is clear for you now. Yeah, it was Sunday. Yeah, okay, okay. Thanks. Uh, give me a minute. Uh, uh, okay, guys. So we are discussing about uh, Docker Compose today. So yesterday we have seen Docker Swarm, right? On Docker Swarm, what we have seen is we have created a service, and we have make available that service for multiple replicas with different containers, right? On different nodes. But on today's topic, we are going to discuss something about called as Docker Compose. Yesterday we have seen some of the intro for the Compose. So let's take the middle part now. So today I will compose like Docker Compose and Docker Stack and just like uh, integration of Jenkins with uh, Docker Hub, okay? And day after tomorrow, there are some other points like I will discuss. Okay, Docker Compose, this one. So Docker Compose file includes services, networks, Compose and volumes. Right. The default Next. path is and we can less. able to access single service with multiple ports. For example, a service is running on 8080. I can access the service on 8081. And I'm able to access the same service on 8082. So that thing is possible on Docker Compose file. Next, how to install this Docker Compose? So as I said before, like yesterday, we have installed Docker Compose, right? So today I'm going to install one more time for you. Um, let me open the AWS console. Uh, actually, this is blocked, I think so. Uh, Penny, tell me your. Hmm. Double nine. <laughs> Password. <laughs> Give to me. Capital P, right? Okay. So I'm going to uh, create this one QTST. Sudden. 
It is uh, like Pranay, I think so. Password is not correct one. Yeah, tell me any of you. Ashwa. Okay, Richard. Y A S W A N T H nine. Okay. Zero four. Zero four. Is captain? Hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay, Ashwan, uh, you tell me yours. Captain, yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. Captain, yeah, captain. Oh, only yes, sir. C H A. Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay, so I want my console here. Okay, okay, let me create one more instance. So I'm going to create a Docker for now. Instance type like this is enough for me. And key pair, I'm not going to use any key pair. Or else, like, let me create a new key pair. No. Docker compass. Use the PPK format. And here we need to give uh, all of it because when you are working with the Docker Compose, right? Every part you are going to enable. So that means definitely just maintain any one of them. Like Spotify is like really not necessary for us. So I'm going to create a new security group and then naming it as all here. So SH anyway. And after that, all traffic. Uh, so step anyway. Launch instance. Okay, so for the all people, uh, is my voice clear for everyone? So I think like. Uh, Give me a second. Mohammed Sahel, I think your uh, audio is not clear for you because it is uh, clear for everyone. Uh, check your audio once or else we can. So I'm going to connect to this instance now. Open putty. SSH authentication browse.
Yeah, okay guys, so I'm going to install the Docker Compose now. So previously we have installed the Docker Compose and now I'm going to like install it one more again on my new instance. So copy all these together. And I'm pasting it over here. So my Docker Compose is installed, right? So like I need to install uh, Docker Swarm as well, but like ignore that one because it is not really necessary for us now. So, from here, we are going to take it forward. So, the main thing that we are going to do on Docker Compose is, uh, we are going to If you observe this compose, uh, like you are seeing some of these things, right? So this one. So first of all, what we are seeing there, version, right? So the version means like everything is I have written here. This is the compose file format which supports with the relevant Docker engine. So that means compose. So we have Docker engine running. So the current version three is supported by the Docker engine for the Docker Composer environment. And next services, services we all know, like for application, we are going to definitely use all the services. So each service is nothing but a particular feature of the application. Service name is web app. You can name your name as well for the service. And front end image you are using for the services, Nginx. So Nginx image is going to run a particular port, right? So here I'm giving the ports as 8000 and 80. 80 is the port number of Nginx and 8000 is the port number which you can able to access from the browser. Is it clear? So let me create this compose file. First of all, like uh, let me install the Docker and start the Docker engine. Let me install Docker iPhone by. So after that, like we need to enable the Docker engine. So command we need to give is system CDN start Docker. So Docker engine is started. So give Docker version. So engine is there now, right? So create a file called VM Docker Compass. So file name is this one, VM, Docker, Megas, Nginx, or HTTP you want. So I need to give ports now, your TS and hyphen, 8,000, okay, let's get for W2. Do you have any doubts on this uh, file names? So one more time I'm explaining to you. Version is the current Docker version that is available for this Docker Compose to run services. Like, wait a second. Here, I need to change something because service spelling is wrong. Let's see here. We yes. Okay. So the service name is Swiggy. Okay. So image I'm using for this service, Nginx. And the port, 8000 is the port that can access from the container and 80 is the port of Nginx. So save this one. Use the command docker hyphen compose of hyphen. If you use this one, first of all, we don't have Nginx, right? So it is going to pull the Nginx image. Is the service created now? Give the docker ps hyphen. Oh, sorry, hyphen. If you give here, like uh, this is running, right? So the container ID, let me decrease some spawn size for you. You will have everything on single leg. Stay in the Okay, so if you see here. 
So container ID, this one, and image is nginx, and like command, Docker entry point, the default command is 13 seconds ago we have created, and the status is like 12 seconds ago it is operated. What is the port number we have given? And it can be accessible from anywhere. 0.0.0, .0 means it can be accessible from anywhere. So if I go to my browser, so copy the public IP address of this Docker and paste it over here. If you see this one, 8000, this is the port number I have given, right? If you hit enter, are we able to say any experience there? So, this is the way how to create a basic service on Docker Compose. You can create multiple services. We can create multiple, multiple services. So, how to do that? Go back to your same image. We are Docker Compose environment. Okay, on the service part, you like this. Add the second service. How to add the second service? Go to the same presentation, Swiggy 2. And after that image, mm -hmm. nginx, and after that ports, and the port number I am giving is 8001 now, and nginx image is 8. So close this one, let's check the current operations. So if you want to again make this service up and running, what do you to do guys? Docker Compose. Up hyphen two. So it will make the Compose up and running. So if you see here, Swiggy 2 is the normal. If you observe one, we are having two lines only. Swiggy one is up to date. So there is no changes, right? So the recently added Swiggy two is done. So now what we are going to do is go to here. 8000 port is running right here. Copy this same here. Go to other browser. And we are taking which port number here? 8001. Is it running? So can we change the image? I want to run HTTP. Will it be changed? Definitely. So go to your file again, vm docker compose.yml and like remove this engineering from top of it. Okay. Use the image called HTTP. Is Apache guys. Okay. Let's get it called double equal and give the command docker compose of file control. So again, I don't have HTTP image, HTTP is printed. Now, okay. instead of recreating to change every one dot one. So that means Swiggy service is going to recreate because I have changed something here. So if I go to here and give the refresh button, is it going to appear for me? It works. Huh? It, works. it works. Right? So this is the way how can how you can do it on the default images. But if you want to customize this one, you can write your own names by using the HTTP. Okay. Is it clear for you how the Docker Compose works and how the different kinds of comments work and how you can allocate the different kind of ports for you? Clear for everyone? Okay. So the next topic, like on the same Docker Compose, if we go for the presentation part, the default file is like uh, a normal thing. If you want to down on service, right? if you want to down any of this, give the command call docker compose down hyphen. I think D is not required. Yeah, and one more thing like uh, I would like to show you docker container ls and docker network ls. These are the two comments you need to do. See, if you do the docker hyphen compose network Elvis. What is it? Remove this other compose. Are you able to see the network as well? If you want to see the containers, you can also do the Docker container Elvis. 
are we able to list the containers? If you observe here, we have only single container and the service is multiple services, right? So service one, service two, service three, everything will be on the same container. But on the Docker form, we have created quite opposite one. So clear for you? But the thing is like, uh, if you want to restart a container, you can do it. So first of all, this is the container which set I am running, right? If you observe here, Docker, PS. This both the like running state. If you want to restart, Docker, restart, give the container name. So the container name is this one. Is it here? Is it restarted? Yes. If you want to pass the container, you can pass the container. So give the command instead of restart, give the container called pause. Hit enter. Is the container passed? So now Docker PS give it. So the container is on which state guys? Pause. If you see the status, it is pause the state. If you want to unpause the container, same command, but you unpause in front of normal one. Just yeah, you will. If you use the Docker PS again, it is on up and running set, right? So that means you can restart the container, stop the container, pause the container, unpause the container. And there are also like some other commands, like you can work on this, like Docker logs. If you want to see the container logs, Use the command docker logs and container name. So give this one. Are you able to see the logs? Log is nothing but what are the activities that is given to the container is everything on the messaging format. So if you want to check what happened inside the container, you can directly check the logs. So that means you are able to see whatever is happening inside the container. Is it clear for you? Okay. Yes, okay. Sorry. Log -online. So that means on Git you can get every log on one line. But if you give here this one hyphen hyphen one line, you won't get nothing. If you want to check, you Docker logs hyphen hyphen help hit enter. So these are the some of the default commands that you can use for the logs. Okay. But the most of the times we use is like the real time, you will take Docker Lens, I can have a tail, number of letters you want to take, hyphen 10, hyphen 20, hyphen 30. You remember the tail comment? So that thing we can use on the Docker here. Okay, so the default Docker for the Docker can write the Docker for JSON as Okay, same format, but the syntax is going to be somewhat of other different. So what I am going to do is we have Docker compose.yml. And I'm going to remove all of this from here. Okay. If you observe my screen, I have written it on JSON format. So observe this. Changing the default, like you can, oh, sorry, wait a second. This is some other topic, I think. But, anyways, like just give quick, nothing will happen. Cat docker compose.yml. So my content is there. Actually, the default file is docker.yml only. Every time the default file is. But if you want to change the default file, there is a possibility. I can move, move docker compose.yml to docker compose.yml. Is the default file changing? Actually, the default is docker compose.yml, but I have given docker compose.yml. If you give docker compose, Of hyphen D, it is going to show this error. What is showing to me? Supported file names Docker Compose YML, Docker Compose YML, Compose YML, and Compose YML. Okay. But if we go and see this one, just remember this carefully Docker Compose of hyphen D. Okay. You will get some error or changing default Compose YML. Okay. So for that purpose, what we are going to do is we need to use some separate command. If you directly give Docker Compass one dot YML up, it is not going to take it. We need to change the format. So the format will be like this: Docker Compose hyphen F, Docker Compose one dot YML up hyphen. Okay. So this is the default thing you need to 
form. So just give the same thing here. What is the command can say? Docker compose. Hyphen here. And after that, let's see. Docker composer bind. Hyphen here. And here after I tell you Docker compose one dot environment up hyphen. If you see this one, the file is going to update, right? So this is the way how you can change the default format. And DLP, we are never going to change the default format. But if you want to change, this is the command you need to follow. Docker compose hyphen here and the compose file that you have changed up hyphen. And if you want to down these services, just to give down. Hyphen is not required, give down. If we go and see here, all these services are not going to be running. So go to the browser, hit refresh button. Wait for a minute, it won't work. Is it working now? So this is the way how you can remove the default default services by using the default file. Okay. So the next concept is going to be Docker stack. Have anyone heard about it? First of all, like let me know what is the meaning of stack. What you can understand of about the stack. Stock is nothing but like everything from end to end, right? So if you want to launch an application or launch, a, uh, if you want to launch a stack, like if you want to launch the full software or anything, I need two things, front end and back end, right? So every front end and back end will be resembling on the stack only. It is user when you want to launch and whole software together, you will write all the services and launch them together. So that means you are going to launch the front end services as well as Backend services. Frontend means we can take HTTP or engines. Backend means you can take the database, like for example, Redis. Redis database we are like we can use a real time as well. So here I have seen like uh, I have given the commands. Let me share you my presentation for you. Like uh, I have written documentation here. Okay. So this is the thing how you can follow to deploy an application by using default. Docker stack. Okay, so here the requirements are like you need to have four files. Remember, this is like you can put it on like a main project as well. By using Docker stack, we are going to depend Python application. Okay, but it's not that big much of us. I have taken some default Python file, only, but in real time, if you want to make it a, a mini project, you can take the first one is app dot so yeah, That means this file will consist of your total Python application. Second one is Docker compose. Docker compose will consist of your front end and back end services. Okay. Next, Docker file. So, Docker file, we can write to create image, right? From that image, we can create the container. And lastly, we have something called as your requirements. So, first of all, I'm going to create a file called app.pm. Okay. So, don't try to understand this code because, like, to understand this one, you need to have some Python knowledge. Okay. So, this is the default code I'm taking. So, give the command as VIM. App dot p1. Okay, so I am going to take it like this. So copy everything from here and paste it on here. Okay, so my Python application code is ready for you. So file number one is done for me. And what is the file number to come this from? Docker compose dot If you observe this one. I have taken the most recent one that is 3.9. Okay. Services. I am going to build a web service for it. Okay. So the port number is 8132 and 5000. So that means I can use these ports to build my application. And the backend I am going to use is Redis. So remember, if you can't put like a dot here, it is not going to build. What is the meaning of uh, dot here? Current. So that means the Docker Compose is going to build on the current location. Okay, so I'm going to copy everything from here. So you like I am removing this old one rm minus rm docker compose environment. Vm docker compose dot environment 
and paste the whole thing see. So one more time I'm explaining. Version is the recent version I am taking, that is 3.9, right? And what is the name of services? So where I am building this one? Current address. So building is nothing but you are going to build the Docker file, guys. Okay, remember, you are going to build the Docker file on where? Docker compose. So the ports I have taken is 8123 and other port is 5000. I will tell what is 8132 and 5000. And what is the backend image I am using? This is for my database. Okay. Application needs to be have front end and back end, right? Front end, I am going to take an image, but that image comes from Docker file. So I am going to build Docker file here. Okay. And back end, I am taking the image as Redis. So save this one for now. So here I am having two files. One is I have my application file. Second one I have is and I have like I need to create the Docker file now. And after that requirement of PHT, I need to create these both files. So if you see here, this is some of the big thing we need to understand. If you can't understand, like it will be difficult for you. So I am going to create a Docker file now. Hit enter. Okay. So from what is the meaning of from? Base image. So the base image I am going to take it as Python because I am working on Python, right? So for my container, I need Python software to be running. Okay. So the base image I have taken is Python, that is 3.7 alpha. And the work directory, I am going to have this code. So when I enter to my container, what is the default directory? I'll be there under code. So env, env is nothing but your environment variables, as said before. The meaning of class dot app is it is going to take your app.py. So we have app.py in our local file, right? So it is going to take my local environment file. And other environment variable I have is flask run hyphen hyphen host. That means it is going to take every port. So every port that can I can be accessible from here. See, I am going to run a command that is apk add hyphen hyphen no cache gcc. This is some of the default command. Okay. So just remember there is a command because this is containing some of the Linux headers as well as GCP compilers. Next. So here I am going to take two files. One is your requirement.txt and another one is requirement.txt. So that means I have my local file requirement.txt. I am going to copy my requirement.txt to requirement.txt on where? Under code directory. Just don't confuse, like I left it on simple way. Requirement.txt is on my local first. Okay. So the copy command is it, you find, is it to next. copy the run command. Like I am going to install some pip modules, you know, pip modules, right? So where I am going to install is under requirement.txt. Under this file, I am going to install this one. And expose. Which port we are using? 5000 port we are going to expose. And I am going to give copy dot dot means so that means what are the files that are your, your local mission you are going to copy from to the container mission inside where port directory. And last like command you are going to use to command so this class enter. So that means you are telling the to run the class. Okay. So just remove all of this from here and save this one. Like this might be confusing for you, but recall when you are practicing, it will be like easy for you. Because it is what somewhat related to Python. We don't know Python, right? So that that might be somewhat difficult for you. So totally I have three files now, right? And the fourth file I need is requirement.txt. So create a file where requirement.txt. So go to the code. What are the requirement guys here? Last entity. So that means you are going to install this both two on your image. Okay. So go to here and paste it over here. And one more thing, like we need to be careful, like uh, we are giving requirement of TXT. Okay. We need to check it is requirements actually. Okay. On the top of the also it is requirements.txt. So I am going to move requirement.txt to requirements. Okay, it is fine. So everything I have now, app.py will consist of my Python code. That is used to build a basic, uh, what we call application. 
and this docker compass will have both the front end image and back end image front end image it is going to get from where docker file once i build the docker file it will get me the total image and the file that is generated by the docker file image that is given from the docker file is going to be issued by docker compass okay and lastly we are having requirement.txt so what we can do is here we need to run a command like this okay Give the command docker compose of hyper D. So, this is the command that makes the service up and running. So, docker hyper compose of hyper D. See what will happen. It is taking first of all 3.7 image and it is going to install each and every step, right? So, this is the wait a second, six copy requirements.txt to requirement.txt. I do have R E Q. Okay, spelling is wrong. Requirement file not found in the build or context. File does not exist. I have given the R E Q. Let us spell and check it. Go to the docker file because like spelling mistakes are very careful we need to observe because if we can't make it, it is going to throw definitely an error. Okay. So run the same thing now. Yeah, it is fine now. So if, if you observe that one, previously I have given requirement spelling wrong. So it is have not taken. If you observe one, like web search is created and one more thing is Redis. Are this both of these up and running now? The both curve which I have given is totally complete up and running. So in this way, I have created a Python application with the front end image of the Docker file and the back end image by using nice. Redis. Is it clear for you? So how to make this Docker file completely? But one more time, I'm explaining like don't try to understand it completely. But the Python code, don't try to understand it. Just make it as like I have given to the uh, Notepad. So now we want to build something as you were. Docker stand. Up to now, we worked on Docker Compose only. Okay. Compose, we can run the service only. But Docker stack is to launch all the services together by using a single file. So create a file called Docker stack. Okay. And the version you are going to give it is 3. Service you are going to give it as web, right? And after that, like image you are going to give it is HTTP 5000 code. Okay. In the application name you are going to give is Test that. Port number is like 8000 and 8000. So that means by using the public IP address, you can give the port number 8000. So the application which you have created is going to run on the 8000 port. And lastly, image. Which image you are going to use? Ready. Ready is something that is your background, like uh, we can use database service. Okay. So view the everything like this. Use the Docker Compose environment. It will be the same thing. We have Docker Compose environment. So remove all of these ones. So run this again. So here we need to give a command, guys. Uh, like remember this command carefully. So the command I need to give is Docker stack deploy. So I am deploying the compose file. That is even compose not viable. And my first stack is the stack name you are going to use. Okay, so copy this command. 
I will explain one more time. So Docker stack deploy. So that means you are going to deploy a stack. That means you are end-to-end -end services. So hyperactive compose. So the compose file is Docker compose environment. And the stack name is Microsoft. It end up on what is showing to you? Docker service is not going to install it. So give the command Docker swap any hit enter. So it is integrated, right? So give the same command now. Is it creating a stack? See, if you observe, your default is default stack. This stack is for front end. Redis is for so that means by using Docker Compose file, we have created your front end service, back. your back, back end service, and everything you have offered by the single stack. Is it clear for you? If we give Docker stack ls, so that means the you are going to restore the number of stacks you are having. How many number of stacks you are having? Number of stacks you are having. The name of the stack is five of stack. That is, I have given here, right? Even you can give your name as. So, the number of services you are running on this stack is one is your front end and one is your back end. Front end image comes from where? No, no, no. Front end image comes from, first of all, you have built a Docker file, right? From the Docker file, you got an image. From that image, you have built a Docker compose, okay? But the default image we are using is HTTP for this application. If we use a cat, Docker compose.yml. So images we are using HTTP and the port number is 5000. Okay. So the image you are going to use is Redis. Redis means like it is somewhat of a database if you observe. So the other comments we can do it is give Docker stack services, <coughs> services and stack name. So give Docker stack services. In the service name, like you are going to use is my first stack, right? Hit enter. Are you seeing the services now? Services. These are on replicated mode. So that means if you remove one, there will be like another will be automatically created. But I haven't given replicas here. But the mode is on still replicated mode. If you want to create, you can use it and matter. Next. Like if you want to see the containers. Okay. Up to now, I have seen the Docker stack only. Docker stack LS means it will give the stack list. And after that, I have seen. Docker stack services. What are the services that I am running on the stack? And now I am one, going to see the two, containers of three, the stack. four, so five. And this backend is what? Ready service. Okay. So all these services are going to be created for the Docker stack. So if you want to access application, how you are going to access? So go to the EC2 instance, copy the public IP address. Give the port number as first 5000. Give it 5000 first initially. Are you seeing anything? The mm -hmm. is 5000 and give 8000. Are you seeing anything? Mm -hmm. Then how we can access the application? Anyone? 8 to here. Okay. I will give 8125. Are we looking at this deal? Yeah. Then how, how we can? We should enable something. We should? Enable What we can enable? I have given 8024 there, right? I'm going to come back to this. Then I'll be run out. So do Docker PS I turn it. Check which port it is enabled to know. Check the port numbers now. We need to do this one. Huh? Okay, six three seven nine. It is simple answer, but you can tell it directly as well. 67. But it is not coming yet. So then, like, what is the thing that we are missing? I have given it like a anyway, that means every port can be accessible. 
I got 80, 80. I haven't given 80, 80. 80, 80. 80, 80. Let me try this one as well. It is stock at right. Default. Default. 80, 80. No, no, no. 80, 80 default. So default is only 80. Okay. We don't to give 80, but we can give 80, 80. But on this, like anywhere, I haven't mentioned 80. So then what is missing on here? Okay, I will I will explain the Jenkins part. I will explain Jenkins part now. By referencing of Jenkins part, you need to tell me this. Okay, otherwise you need to commit with tomorrow. Okay, so this is the Docker stack files. Uh, do you have any doubt from Docker stack? Like how to deploy the whole application together? We have given the Python application and we have used the front end, HTTP, web server, and for the back end, we have used the database. So everything we have is red application we have the database we have and the web server we have. So that means every software or every application we can deploy by using browser. Clear for you? Okay. Now I'm going to explain one more topic that is called as the Jenkins. How to uh, satisfy the code should be written by us. Uh, see what we like. This is only for reference only. Okay. I have made it reference only. You do not to write any Python code. The Python code will be given for developer. Just for explanation purpose and understanding purpose, I have taken some basic code from the internet and I have explained this purpose. Okay. So now I am going to integrate this Jenkins part on Docker. So how to integrate this Jenkins on Docker? Jenkins dot Iona. There is another way we can do it by using image. Okay. Go to your Docker Hub. You have you all have Docker Hub, right? So go to Docker Hub now. So this is like default Docker Hub, like this box is one. I think he's not today here. This box is here. All right. Okay. So I'm going to use like Docker repository here. Just Go to the search box and you check it. Okay. Here you can see this one, right? Jenkins. Click on this one. We need to use a specific image here. That is LTS image only. If it is not LTS, you are not going to use this image. Or you can directly view like this as well. So Docker, pull the image from the Docker hub. The image is consisting of everything that need for the Jenkins. Hit enter. Are you getting the Jenkins image? If I get the Jenkins image, then what I need to do? I need to run the container, right? To run the container, I have something to do. I need to allocate port numbers. Jenkins will not be only 8084. We all know. And we need to give the container port as well. So the command we need to give is docker run hyphen p. What is the port number of Jenkins? <laughs> Column 80, 80. And hyphen P, I am using. So here I am using like 50,000. I will tell you what, why I have used. Okay. So and what is the image name? Jenkins slash Jenkins LDs. Ticket. Locker spelling wrong. So I have given double E here. Uh, so it is directly running with a Docker image now. If you observe, you are able to see something called as your token. If you directly give the token on your web browser, Jenkins is going to directly turn. So go to your dashboard, copy the public IP address. And one thing you need to remember is you need to enable this. 8384 and security proof. So while you are practicing like Docker Compose, Docker Stack, and all other things, make sure that you have enabled each and every port. Okay. So 8080. This is my Jenkins port, right? Are you able to see the Jenkins dashboard now? Yes, yes. Now I want my token. Where I can find the token? You can find the token in two ways of the Docker. One is you can directly find the token on your Logs. Second one is you can find the token inside the container. It is your token, right? 
if you observe. So copy is located from here, go to your browser and paste it over here. Hit enter. Install suggest plugins. So if you install the plugins here, then the Docker container which I'm using is directly going to tell the comments. Is it telling me logs? All these logs which you are using the plugins to install, right? So these are the plugin logs. It will continue until the plugin is installed. See, if you see here, like add Apache HTTP plugin, minor plugin, gradle plugin, entire plugin, branch plugin, everything plugin is going to download here as well. So these are like nothing but your tail of logs. So go to here. These are going to install completely. So I'm going to use the credentials now. Save and finish. So, have you set up the Jenkins by using Docker guys too? So, this is the way how you can set up. So, from tomorrow, like I will show you some of the parts that I can integrate with Docker. Okay. So, like I can install a Docker plugin and I can like directly build the pipeline to deploy the Docker images. Okay. So on today's class, what we have discussed is we have discussed Docker Compose installation, Docker Compose multiple service, single service, and some Docker Compose comment. After that, we have gone to the Docker stack, Docker stack creation, and taking a basic application and deploying on Docker stack. And finally, we have used Docker integration with Jenkins. Okay, this is only half part. Like we need to set up the Docker node for the container level, and we can like just mass and flow concept if you remember. Just like master and slave concept, it's easy to be out done, right? With the help of the contact concept, you can able to do it. Okay, we need to install a Docker plugin. So we need to go for here, manage Jenkins, and go to manage plugins. Okay, so go to available, and there is a plugin called Docker, if you observe. So this is Docker plugin. plugin. So from Jenkins, you can directly refer to the Docker containers. If you observe, like, we have seen the master slave concept, right? The same concept is going to implement here, but there we are having EC2 instance, but here we are having Docker containers. That's the only difference. Clear? Okay, so for the online people, guys, are you having any doubt for today's class?